reflecting back, there are a lot of different things that I could have done different, but um, everything happens for a reason. Now I'm here. I was brought here at the age of nine without really much uh, choice. Uh, my parents brought me here. They're, they're more of economic refugees, I would say, than, than anything else. Um, to live a better life, to study, to study in better schools, and to really live this quote-unquote uh, American dream that they, they so much believe in. And, um, you know, I, I think it has definitely had an impact on my life. Uh, on the opportunities that I had here in Minnesota. Um, I've, I've been fortunate enough to meet amazing people and those people have become my mentors and shown me different ways of thought, think, uh, thinking, and really doing things. In 2012, when President Obama announced the program for Deferred Action for Childhood Arrivals, I was really excited. Uh, I had been here um, as an undocumented immigrant and I, for once, had the opportunity to drive a car, get a license, um, potentially get a, a car loan. Um, and it really opened up a lot of different opportunities. In the meantime, uh, as that was um, going forward, I, I, I was able to become more heavily involved in the community and really see the, the real struggles that everyday people go through. People, I mean, essentially that don't have a lot of voice. Uh, people with that have traditionally been disenfranchised and and not have much power uh, so that definitely um, was really eye-opening I became an entrepreneur when I was 22 started a logistics company here locally uh, with the goal to electrify the less than truck load uh, last mile delivery uh, industry here um, and now I currently have another company called Liddy Solar. It's a solar technology company focused on making solar energy equitable for everyone, regardless of your socioeconomic status or, or your income. Solar power is sustainable. It can bring independence. You can use it as for economic justice, economic power, and it's the future. So the millennial Latinx uh, community and, and generation, I suppose, uh, you know, it's, it's definitely a generation that are fighters and they have been in the forefront of um, many of the political movements, uh, both like here within the state and on a national level uh, for the Latinx community. And it's, it's one of those generations where uh, it, we were happy, at least um, the latter part of the generation, uh, the younger part, uh, was able to take advantage of DACA and, and really realize what their potential was, their dreams, go to school, start a business, uh, be, be doing X activity. And that, that has a, a lot of power, has a lot of empowerment for many people. And, I've also had the opportunity to really see what the next generation will look like, um, both in, in here in Minnesota, but also in, in around the country. And it's it just warms my heart that so many people are becoming uh, they're they're incredibly smart and they're trying to do things uh, to change things up. Uh, it could be within their community. It could be, I mean, running for office, or essentially could be trying to fight climate change. And it's, it's beautiful to see so many people, so many young people uh, trying to do that. My name is Nestor and I'm incredibly hopeful for this generation and the coming generation of Latinos here in Minnesota.